welcome to the Michelle Valentine Show. I'm your host, Michelle Valentine. I'm Casey Blake. And this evening we have a very special show. It's just jam-packed with all kinds of goodies on love, relationships, singles, lots of great stuff coming up. Well, let's see. We visited Lou Gardens for this wonderful wine tasting. So those of you that aren't familiar with wines and the different styles and years and so if you're a guy especially that has a problem uh, absolutely ordering this, wine <laughs> this would be, this would be very educating and we did a trip to Lou Gardens and also coming up we have we have a psychic here tonight I think you'll find that rather interesting she's a love psychic a love psychic, love psychic. To boot. I actually did a quick little <laughs> reading on on Michelle and myself <laughs> to see how that pans out <laughs> Yes, and uh, she's an internationally known psychic. She was even the psychic who predicted um, all of the Oscar winners, and she was correct, and they have all this on tape, and it was just phenomenal. I had originally met her. Um, she was actually doing a reading on me, and she was so precise that she actually came up with my sister's name. I, my sister's name is very unusual, and she came up with my sister's name, and she said all this all these other things about me that was just so incredible. I think you'll find it fascinating. <laughs> and you should see her outfit. She has this great gold turban. It's just incredible. And uh, what else? Oh, we have a special guest. This guy is this guy is the events director for a very uh, what should I say societal type of singles group in the area. Very prominent. I'd love to yes. have this guy's job. <laughs> he throws these beautiful big charity balls where people go and they wear these beautiful ball gowns and they have you know the wonderful hot hors d'oeuvres and pâtés and swing bands and all kinds of great stuff he throws these big parties just for singles and uh, we went to one of those parties had a great absolutely. time absolutely and the last part of the show as always we feature single guests and tonight we have a very special single female guest so pen and paper handy, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, we're going to have an email address for you and a phone number where you can contact her if you like. <laughs> so let's see, there's half a million viewers of you out there. I'm sure she's probably going to find a husband somewhere out there. Maybe it's you. So thanks for joining us tonight. Stay tuned after the commercial break. We're going right to the Lou Gardens wine tasting, and you're going to enjoy the show so much. Thanks for tuning in to Michelle Valentine. You know, it doesn't have to be a special occasion to open up a nice bottle of wine. And you don't have to be rich. But if you know what you're doing, you can find a very nice bottle of wine for under $10. And some people know what they're doing. You can figure out what kind of wine it is, and you can pair it with food. If you like mild, light, full body, that's the big thing right now. It's like a, a wine list. So So get your pen and paper out and uh, start ready to listen to some folks that know a little bit about wine. Um, whites and vanilla and vanilla are made from the same grapes. What happened is that back in the 70s, well, there were a couple of bad vintages of Zinfandel, and the producers were sitting on a lot of juice that they really couldn't use. So they decided to appeal to a mass audit market audience. They put a lot of residual sugar in the wine, and they took the skins out of the wine. That's, the skins are what give it the color. So they took the skins out of the wine just when it got pink, before it actually got red, dumped some sugar in there, and presented it to the rosé on the market. Well, Zinfandel has always been a very respected wine red varietal. But it, again, went out of vogue a little bit in the late 70s, and it's just, it's come back for real, I think, wine connoisseurs all through the 80s and the 90s. It's, uh, real Zinfandel, red Zinfandel, is somewhere in between a Merlot and a Cabernet. Its typical characteristics are a very big fruit um, and a little bit of spice, and it's about medium body, great food wine. So if anyone knows, yeah, the difference is that there is no difference. They come from the same grape, but one's very sweet and resembles rosé, and the other is a uh, far more better crafted wine. While the wine is bottled, it tends to contract a little bit as far as its flavor and its smell is concerned. Obviously, it's trapped in the bottle. What
what you're doing when you're, for instance, actually this is water, but just, just for uh, example, when you're swirling wine like that, you're trying, as the wine is exposed to air, it begins to oxidize. And the nose, the, which is the, the aroma, comes out, at, as does the true character, the true nature of the wine. It's kind of like escaping from the bottle and coming out into the world. Now, eventually, the air will over-oxidize the wine, and it will lose fruit and flavor, and just basically, after so long, will become vinegar. So, but that's what people are doing. When you, when you swirl the glass, you're trying to expose the surface of the wine to air so it can kind of expand and come into what it was originally supposed to be. Especially, there's like a romance with wine. There's a mystique with wine, and uh, but at the same time, it's always been kind of, you know, put on a pedestal, so to speak. Um, wine is a special occasion type thing. That's the way it's been built before, and especially at Dexter's, our philosophy is wine is a beverage. We have 30 wines by the glass. We price them between four and six dollars. We have a clientele that's very loyal, very local that comes, you know, a few days a week, and and and. They drink wine with their meals, and you can't drink, you know, expensive wines every day with your meals. And that's, to me, what the essence of wine is. That's the way it's done in Europe. People drink wine every day uh, in South America, where you're from. And uh, in America, that's becoming more like that. Um, also, you know, the romance of it, like I said, you, if you ever go to Napa Valley or Sonoma County, you know, near San Francisco and California, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And I mean, the winers are beautiful. They're very friendly. The people are friendly. You go there and experience, have some nice wine experiences, uh, do a little fine, do a little dining. You're going to come back, you're going to drink wine. You're going to expand your knowledge, you know, or just want to. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's twofold, I think. It's romantic, it's, it's special, but at the same time, I think more and more people are, are looking at it also, taking it off the pedestal a bit and, you know, and just drinking it more on an everyday occurrence. And that's what I like to see. I like a well-made wine. And that's why I tell people, I drink everything. Um, Florida, especially with climate, like when it gets real hot, I start drinking lighter wines. I drink dry rosés, I drink German wines because they're light, they're low in alcohol, they're very Pinot Grigios from Italy, very crisp, very clean, uh, Sauvignon Blancs from California. And as it gets hotter, I naturally, I don't think about it consciously, I just naturally start drinking fuller bodied reds. Uh, I like all wines, I just want something that's well made. I drink a lot of $10 stuff. Uh, um, again, it's the same thing. I mean, you want to, you know, here you've got a group of friends around, you want to take that, and you're all talking and having a good time, do you want to take that bottle of wine that this special bottle of wine and, and put it in the center and all of a sudden everybody, you know, you open it up and everybody gets quiet and you have to like pay attention to it. I mean, that's not the way to drink, that. that's the way to drink that wine because it's a great wine and there are venues where you'd want to drink that wine like that. But most of the time you're with a group of friends and to sit there and, and drink a wine like that and not pay attention to it, that's not very good. And at the same time, you know, um, to make wine the centerpiece and detract from the conversation, it's, it, you know, it all blends together. You know, your good friends conversation, a nice feeling, that good warm feeling with, you know, with, with the wine. And uh, that's what, that's kind of the, I go back to the philosophy a bit with Dexter's. That's just, that's wine every day. That's wine not interfering with the rest of what's going on for the evening, you know, just part of the evening. And that's the way it should be. Well, we hope that this has helped you a little bit and that next time you go to the store, you'll be able to pick the bottle of wine that you want for your taste. If you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show, Love, Eat, Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv for more information about an upcoming TV show. Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Are you wondering where all the quality singles are? Singles that are attractive, educated, and financially secure? Hello, I'm Michelle Valentine, and I've helped thousands of singles live a happier life, and I can help you too. Clients and members include millionaires, models, doctors, lawyers, and teachers. So call us for your complimentary consultation. Welcome back. 
I am very pleased to introduce you to one of my very good friends, mm -hmm. Lynn Rader. Internationally known psychic, Lynn Rader is one of the most accurate psychics in the world. She is the official psychic for Cool 105.9 FM radio. And they have this on tape. Lynn, let's see, you accurately predicted all the Academy Award winners for 1998. That is phenomenal. That is phenomenal. And I have to tell the viewers out there of how Lynn and I originally had met, um, or what happened when we met. When we had met, Lynn actually told me the name of my sister, amongst some other information as well. And uh, my sister, who's, who's very dear to me, and I was, I was so shocked because she, she knew my sister's name. And uh, I'm not going to say the other personal information that she gave me about myself, <laughs> because it uh, it was it was just incredible. And um, so here we are today after after so many is for so long I've known you now. And um, so I want you to tell everyone out there, um, you know, what it is that you do exactly. What what does a psychic do? What enables you to be a psychic? Some people there are so many people who are they're not believers or anything like that mm -hmm. and um, you know maybe some what are some of the frequently asked questions that people are always asking you okay well the uh, by the way I never knew you cared so much <laughs> 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 but anyway I I'm glad to be here Michelle with you today that's number one and Casey also the number one question is asked of me is probably how did you get to become a psychic the answer is quite simple. My mother dropped me on my head when I was a baby, and that's the only thing I can figure out that worked. And actually, some testing and some stories by other psychics have proven that people who have had severe head injuries <laughs> have often opened up their psychic abilities. So if you want to become psychic quickly, get out the baseball bat and <laughs> give yourself a couple whacks on the head and write us and let us know how psychic you are. <laughs> the second question is, uh, frequently, most frequently asked question is, what sign is compatible with my sign? Well, there is really no true answer to that question unless you actually do an astrology chart for each person involved in the relationship, even if it's just a starting flirtation, because we work with 10 planets in each person's chart. So you have all these planets kind of, you know, either slapping each other or kissing each other in the chart, all right? So, in other words, uh, usually Leos and Scorpios are not compatible. We know that you're a Scorpio, Michelle, and that Casey's a Leo, okay? However, Casey may have a Scorpio moon or you may have a Leo moon in your chart. If you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show, Love, Eat, Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv for more information about her upcoming TV show. Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Are you wondering where all the quality singles are? Singles that are attractive, educated, and financially secure? Hello, I'm Michelle Valentine, and I've helped thousands of singles live a happier life, and I can help you too. Clients and members include millionaires, models, doctors, lawyers, and teachers. So call us for your complimentary consultation the cards yes or they uh, what else there's card readers there's you know the horoscope people that you read in the, the, in the newspapers and palm readers um, what you know what is the difference between a chart and then there's different ways to read a chart there's I've heard of the, the numbers numerology and mm -hmm. there's uh, the sun signs and what what is the difference between all of this or 
Well, how that's that's about three or four shows in one question. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'll try to answer it as briefly as I can, quote unquote, the briefly, because being brief is something that's very challenging for me. However, the a question that you're asking about the, the tarot cards, the palm readers, and the astrology. You do not have to be psychic to be a card reader. I can mm. teach you how to do the cards. I can teach you how to do the cards. Now your psychic ability may help you be a better reader than somebody who's just reading the cards. It's a craft. You mm. can actually get instructions in a little booklet on how to read the cards and what each card means. The reason the cards are so interesting is because the person, the legend is the person who's choosing them is selecting what they are creating in consciousness, all right? So you're not just picking up events in a card reading, you're picking up the way a person is thinking ph philosophically, psychologically, okay? And what you create in consciousness shapes your future. That's the way I see it. Now, I cannot teach people how to give you your sister's name. That's true psychic ability. Okay. Interesting. Yes, uh-huh. I've always thought of uh, the, the psychic thing as just kind of a lark, but uh, just off the brief reading that, that you gave me, I was, I was actually rather astounded. Uh -huh. um, and what so. was the most astounding thing for you that I mentioned? Well, it was just the, the quick references of, you know, of, of how Leos are and, uh, and and conflicting uh, signs and whatnot, but uh, just that in itself. Uh, if I if I look back and in any past relationships that I may have had that may have uh, faulted, there's actually it doesn't seem to be a lot of malarkey. Well, that's a good point because when I first started doing astrology, I first of all I thought the Earth was going to swallow me because I was told this was, you know, an evil study. However. Uh, there are references in the Bible also to it being, you know, practice and something good. So there's conflicting uh, quotations in the Bible about astrology. You know, maybe next time I'm here I'll be able to, to run those down. But the uh, Leos are, and the Scorpio both, are two of the most powerful signs in the zodiac. So when I found out what your sun signs <laughs> were, it was sort of, <laughs> it's like, uh, who's, who's the leader, you know, today? So. Like I'm saying, uh, there are some points in the characteristics that make you understand yourself better, and that's what was wonderful for me to learn about myself. In fact, after I learned what my zodiac sign characteristics were, I called up my psychiatrist and said, I don't need you anymore. I know myself. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so you do charts on people. So what, yes. what does that mean? What does that mean when you when you do a chart? What, how do you get this information? Well, besides me telling you, but where does this information, um, you do a chart, what do you do? You take the signs, the, the moon and stars, or yes. what, what happens when you read, it, when you read someone's yes, chart? Yes, everything. <laughs> uh, well, what happens is you see a visual representation of what would be the equivalent of taking a photograph of the heavens the moment of birth, of your birth, of Casey's birth. Okay? So there are ten planets that we work with, and it's not indelibly etched as far as your destiny goes. Things change. Planets go around that birth chart. We call it a natal chart. So that's why the one good thing I've learned through astrology is that things do change. So you don't have to get stuck in the past or a past event mm. or past situation, okay? Um, the good part about astrology is that it leaves you free will, all right? I think that's a mistake that most people feel that once you do your chart, it's indelible. Mm. There's nothing you can change or nothing you can do about anything. The purpose is to make it easier for you to make changes and to see right. when those changes would be the best to make, okay? For instance, maybe you wanted to move to California. Maybe after the show you might want to. <laughs> but uh, I would be able to tell you, well, you know, this is an absolute perfect time. This may not be the best time. You can still make the move, mm. even if the time you feel may not be the best time astrologically. Okay? What are your thoughts about, uh, say, when I open a local newspaper and I read, you know, my horoscope? I mean, sometimes it's 
I mean, they seem to be pretty vague, say say the least. But I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on those? Do they hold any credence or? Well, I have very strong thoughts on those daily horoscopes. I actually write them myself for my radio station, Cool 105.9 FM, and for also Orlando Online. But you do the daily horoscopes for the general mm -hmm. horoscope. You don't do it for the specific horoscope that would affect you specifically. And I say, have fun with them. You know, uh, many people will call and say, wow. You know, you, you hit it right on. Well, perhaps that day it was. I do what's called a universal consciousness horoscope, which takes in what is what the planets are doing in the heavens for that day for a universal consciousness, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're getting real deep here. There's no way you could do a daily horoscope for a general, you know, audience that would be totally spot on, totally accurate every I'm single sure day. You have 500 million people that you'd have to Exactly. But there are certain general transits that would affect the Leo energy or the Scorpio energy. And I'd love to do some of those aspects for you sometime on your show. That would be great. I, I am an avid reader of my daily horoscope and it's <laughs> and I know and I need to actually get out of reading these first thing in the morning because <laughs> I'll read it and, and you'll be in a great mood and you know, your day's going great and say if you read it around say ten AM you read it and it goes, Oh, today's only going to be like a two out of a ten and You're like, Oh no, I I've been having a great day. So then, you know, subconsciously you have this kind of thing like, Okay, something's going to go wrong or and so I, I personally have been trying to stop reading these things first thing in the morning and trying to read them later on in the day. I even have you know, people at the office tell me, okay, make sure you don't catch me reading this in the morning. <laughs> read, it, read it later on in the day. But I, I think astrology is great. I, I do a little bit of reading on myself, on the books and so forth of your sign. And I think what is good is that if they say, okay, Scorpios are, are supposed to be like this, this, and this, it, it actually helps you that if you wanted to do something in your life that you were not good at, it, it alerts you to that to kind of work on that a little bit. So if you already know you're a strong person, but say you have a problem with communicating with other people, maybe you need to work on those skills. Mm -hmm. So Precisely. Astrology is, is a great thing. It's not a you know, cut and dry kind of thing. It's kind of something that, you know, it's kind of self-enlightenment, some, something like that. <laughs> Well, astrology does show you the soul's soul's journey in the uh, zodiac and in the universe uh, on the other side and this side of life. Okay, so it's the spiritual journey that you're seeing, and you do know that your sign rules sex, don't you, Michelle? Yes, I <laughs> yes I've read that. <laughs> and you do know, Casey, that your sign rules love. So this is a perfect combination here: yeah. sex and love. What a better what the best combination in the world. All we need is money, one more host, and we'll <laughs> it'll be just a perfect combination. And we'll all be cosmically uh, exactly. collided here. I think your point is well made when you say that you should use astrology or any of the mystical arts as a guide, as a tool to right. see, to build up your strengths, right. you know, and Always. to build up your weaknesses too. Mm -hmm. Because the strengths can get stronger and the weaknesses can be overturned and overcome. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole point of astrology and numerology the cards and all the other psychic feelings that, that I work with. And that is what a psychic works with. The true pure psychic impressions are feelings. Okay? Well, I'm feeling anxious waiting for you to finish my chart. I'm waiting for my <laughs> chart to get done. So um, I'm anxious about that. And um, well, it was a pleasure having you on the show. And uh, how can people reach you if they're... They can reach me at 246-4585. That's two four six four five eight five twenty four hours a day. Wonderful. You won't wake me up or my little astrological dog Virgo. We both sleep through mm -hmm. all the voicemails. <laughs> well, thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Stay Michelle. tuned. Upcoming next, we have um, another special guest. Stay tuned. If you're enjoying the Michelle Valentine Show, you will love her new travel TV show. Love, Eat, Travel. Follow Michelle Valentine as she travels the world, showcasing the most beautiful destinations, unique adventures, romantic things to do, delicious foods, and more. Visit www.loveeattravel.tv for more information about her upcoming TV show. 
Hi, this is Michelle Valentine, and I would love if you followed me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Be sure to visit my website, michellevalentine.tv, for more information, read thousands of interesting blog posts, watch videos, enter sweepstakes, and more. Also, be sure to join my email list to receive my free weekly e-newsletter. Are you wondering where all the quality singles are? Singles that are attractive, educated, and financially secure? Hello, I'm Michelle Valentine, and I've helped thousands of singles live a happier life, and I can help you too. Clients and members include millionaires, models, doctors, lawyers, and teachers. So call us for your complimentary consultation. Welcome back. My special single guest today is Lisa. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Isn't she pretty, everyone? Um, you are, uh, tell us about yourself. You are, you work in advertising, yes? Mm -hmm. I do uh, marketing and promotions and special events uh -huh. for a newspaper. So what type of uh, special events have you been working on? Um, music oriented, right? A lot of music oriented mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. um, also we do um, charity events sometimes uh -huh. and we do wine tastings, we do uh -huh. um, a lot of different things. So this year we have more planned than last year, so every year we add something. So you're always out and about, doing all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. very busy schedule. And right. uh, what else do you like to do when you're not working? Um, I like to get out in nature. I'm inside too much because of work, but whenever I can get out and go bike riding, I like to do that. Um, love music, love to go to concerts, and I love to go to the beach. I love to um, do a, a lot, just a lot of different things. I enjoy most everything that's fun, really. Okay. Going to movies. What kind of movies? Yeah. Do you like sci-fi, drama, mm. Titanic kind of movies, or do you like, uh, you know, Bruce Willis kind of movies? What? I really like, um, I like a lot of foreign films and more oh. kind of independent films. I like uh -huh. to see what people can do without a lot of s uh, mm -hmm. money to work with, you know, uh -huh. low budget kind of films. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, so you're busy and all this kind of stuff. You're outgoing. What kind of a person, what kind of a guy are you looking for? Um, I think always number one is personality. Somebody who's very clever and intelligent, and that that always seems to be the the first thing that attracts me to someone. You know, good sense of humor, clever person. But also, I like someone who takes care of themselves and shows that you know they do physically fit and healthy. And I like people that have similar hobbies, like to get out, mm -hmm. you know, do uh -huh. things, go out to clubs or mm -hmm. also go bike riding, go to the beach, so travel. You, and you have a degree, you're degreed in sociology? Mm-hmm, psychology and sociology, mm -hmm. I have two, two degrees. Ooh, Sounds so. like what a catch. <laughs> Great catch. So is there an, anything else of a kind of person that you're looking for? Anything else? Um, physically? <laughs> what kind of a person physically? Well, I like someone who, really who's balanced. In, in a lot of different areas, you know. I, I mean, I like someone who's positive and positive thinking and always trying to grow. And um, I mean, physically fit, you know, but I, I tend yeah. to go for tall and skinny. Hmm, Casey. <laughs> 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 okay, we are going to wrap it up. So hopefully, you'll find uh, a great guy out there. Good Excellent. luck. Thank you. Well, that wraps it up for today. And uh, we want to thank you for joining us. There's no excuse not to watch us. I'm Michelle Valentine. Casey Blake. And thanks for watching.